start the, the recording. Alex, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, happy to be here. And I think, I hope Hans Schuurmans of Proximus is there too. So he will assist me in this presentation. At least I will start with my piece uh, of the cult. Uh, cult, you probably heard of it. It's Collaborative Urban Logistics and Transport. It's a project that we are can, at this moment uh, leading uh, and conducting in the city of Antwerp. And this, let's say, this project uh, looks from, let's say, an alternative perspective as we are used to, to, to the problem of city distribution. And as you will see, we are looking from the perspective of the shippers. Huh? Um, maybe just uh, some introduction. Uh, unfortunately, I had an animation here, but uh, while I'm presenting, it is not really working. But let's say this animation is for slides that you're, uh, you're familiar with, in the sense that uh, we are growing in online. We want to be faster, have a faster delivery. And we are becoming more aware as a consumer. And on the other hand, we see that the cities are suffering congestion. But typically, the biggest suffering is the fact that uh, to move the same amount of goods, as we have changed our consumer behavior, we need to move the same amount with smaller shipments more frequently. This means that there is an increase in shipments uh, also in the city. And it is estimated that being 78% uh, increase by 2030 by the World Economic Forum. And on the other hand, the more regulation is closing the doors of the city, as typically cities author city authorities are closing their doors because they, they, they don't know how to, to handle uh, this, so to say. Right, and uh, the problem is that the logistics system we have for this is not really appropriate. Uh, we have a lot of uh, logistic service provider. Uh, they are very fragmented. Uh, we also have cargo bikers, which is good because it is sustainable, but sustainability does not only means emission free. Uh, sustainability means also, can we guarantee livability of the city? Can we guarantee livability of companies operating uh, uh, with very low margin, even negative margins? And uh, can we improve the livability also uh, of, of individuals, uh, uh, couriers who are moving the goods around? Uh, they should have a livability way of, uh, of acting. Uh, so that's, that's a problem that we see with our logistics system today. Now, uh, the way forward, as we know, is in fact, and you cannot see the, the animation here, but is in fact consolidating uh, at, at the periphery of the city. And it's not, not a new solution, definitely not, because most of the major logistics service providers and, and carriers in the city are doing this already. But the problem is, if we look to a city like Antwerp, all major service providers have their consolidation center now, which is another consolidation center as that of their competitor. And this means that while we were thinking of consolidating there, again, we are kind of fragmenting again. And if we cannot bring all these goods together, we will never make it. Uh, we will never make it profitable for, the, for individual companies, but we will never guarantee the livability of the city. And uh, therefore, uh, let's say the consolidation should be at a higher level. And that's why uh, we proposed to consolidate at the source. This means uh, we should be able to consolidate uh, the shippers' goods as early as possible in the chain. Huh? And therefore, uh, we addressed uh, major companies with a major number of deliveries in the city and say, okay, guys, if you are willing to collaborate and to synchronize, because it's not only consolidating, huh? it's more than that. It is synchronizing. Synchronizing means that you can come with joint cutoff times. You can come with joint visions. Huh? It's not only on operational level that synchronizing is also at a strategic level. Huh? 
jointly uh, doing things, which is not obvious eh, because most companies do not have a kind of ministry of or department of external affairs to, to operate together with other companies. So companies are not used to that. Eh? So you should take them out of their comfort zones. And it's not only the companies eh, that you have to synchronize, but also try to involve city authorities because of course they should be able to facilitate things in the city. And so you should involve them, but also shop owners in the city which might also have a web shop, which should also be able to enjoy, uh, let's say the ideas of consolidation, which is not the case today. And therefore you need also a kind of neutral orchestrator, which guarantee at all times the impartiality of this collaboration, right? Now we have started recently in Antwerp. Uh, these were the seven companies involved. Uh, uh, some of them, you, you probably know, some of them are, uh, are uh, Belgian operating companies, but uh, let me uh, start by just uh, focusing on, on two companies, Proximus and Telenet. These are two telecom companies which are strong competitors. And at some moment in time, and I hope Hans will uh, witness this further down in this presentation, uh, but Proximus and Telenet together uh, decide, okay, let's do this to create more sustainability. Let's offer our volumes together that at the end of the day, we share and we offer our, our consolidation potential to each other to improve both and to improve also uh, do a kind of societal improvement. And that was a, a very, very strong statement that both companies and their CEOs, because uh, each of these companies, the CEO was personally involved. Eh? I went to all the CEOs and I asked their commitment and they gave it. Eh? You can see, by the way, on the website of the Gold City Logistics, how I did this, uh, it's throughout the movie. And you will see the commitment, the personal commitment of these CEOs, because this is a strategic project. This is of major strategic importance to have these companies personally uh, and individually committed. So this is also the operational setup where the companies send their goods to a consolidation center. And it's a consolidation center of B-Post. B-Post was selected after uh, an RFP. It was an open RFP for all uh, service provider and uh, we uh, we defined in a group uh, as a group as a kind of football team you can call it and Trivisor is then the coach of the football team and uh, the players are each of the companies and we we are now creating that football team and together also we decided on the criteria on uh, which we would rate the different uh, uh, proposals of the different uh, carriers. And at the end of the day, we, uh, we came to the conclusion that B-Post had the best offer to bring for Antwerp. This is after uh, uh, two months of operation. After two months of operation, we saw that the savings in CO2 uh, were about, as you can see, 90% savings, while the savings in kilometers covered was, was about 25% uh, less. Huh? So that was already a substantial in, uh, savings that we realized uh, in distance covered and in uh, carbon emissions. Just, uh, and don't forget, this is only for three companies. The three, these three companies, Proximus, Telenet, and Torfs, who is a shoe, this, a shoe company, uh, were the first one to, to be on uh, operational. And they realized this after uh, a few months of operation, right? Now, what was the plan originally? Now, the CULT initiative uh, started uh, already uh, almost two years ago, huh? where there was a project in the city of Antwerp, but Slim naar Antwerpen is a kind of uh, initiative from the Antwerp city authorities to avoid congestion of the city for passengers, but also for goods. And uh, they launched a kind of open project uh, call 
uh, to all uh, companies or organizations or consortia that were able to bring innovative projects uh, in the city distribution of Antwerp. And we participated with, at that time, it was Proximus, Deleuze, Torres, and Bacardi. Huh? They were the first to participate. We, we entered a, our proposal and uh, we were accepted. And then we start to build the cult community. And as you see, these were four, three of these four companies are now in the group. Bacardi uh, is, uh, will join us later on, they will say. But instead of that, we had four other companies coming into the cult collaboration at this moment. And so we created the kind of community, huh? the, the, let's say the football team, uh, in June 21. And we realized the operational start now very recently in March 22. And so we are now operational as we say. And of course, uh, it's a matter of expansion eh, because it's clear the more volume we can consolidate, the better the savings, but also the greater deliverability becomes. Eh? Because we want really to come to let's say, fixed delivery schedules. Like, let's say, uh, instead of using a taxi and just driving when there is a delivery, no, we, try, we want to use a kind of bus schedules type of thing where uh, we have very reliable tours in the city every day, even two in, in the very dense areas, two times, even three times, because it is B2B and B2C combined. So it can be even three times a day that we do the deliveries in the city. Now, this is a very complex uh, thing to show you, and I will walk you this through. This is, in fact, the full network or the, foot, the full framework, I mean, of cult. Well, a basic element uh, of cult is the contract. Uh, we have developed a multilateral contract. And it's in fact, we only have at this moment two contracts. And I will come to that just in a minute on, in my next slide. I will show you how it really works. But it's very simple and very strongly based on scalability, right? It is a contract which is standardized. This means that it, it has passed a, a huge number of legal departments already. So all the things that are changes are just periods and, uh, and, and, uh, and let's say uh, very small things, if something changes, of course, but it is standardized. And that's the good thing. You can add new members very easily, very quickly. But I come just to that in, in a minute. We have also the standardization of the processes, very simple processes, transparent, uh, also together with, uh, so that's also easy to, impose uh, that on, on the logistic service provider that they try to work in the same way all together because they should be interchangeable at the end of the day. And uh, we are looking, but this is not already the case, we are looking to a connectivity platform. And the connectivity platform is a kind of universal connector. It should be very easy. It is just if you are a company, you want to adhere to cult, you connect just once, and then you're good to go in any city with any type of service provider. But you just connect once. And this is very important also for scalability purposes. So you can, if you're once uh, connected, you can go uh, to Antwerp uh, with B-Post, for instance, and then to Brussels. It might be B-Post, it might be another one, uh, carrier. Doesn't matter, you're connected, and then the connector will make it happen and, and connect to all the partners you need, right? So that connectivity platform, as we said, is not there yet. We are looking for that, and that's the, the next thing that we're going to select, uh, but it should be a kind of universal connector, so to say. Another, and I uh, emphasized it already several times, the scalability is a crucial aspect. This collaboration has to grow. If we cannot grow, it will stop. So we have to be able to adhere new companies very fast. And we are now at this very moment, and I was there in a meeting this morning, a new small, medium and medium company, an SME, 
who wants to adhere. And I think we can make it there uh, in less than a week. That should be the idea, right? I hope we can manage it, but okay, that's the proof of the pudding, but it appears to be uh, working. Eh? But that is crucial. Even bigger companies should be, should there in, 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 with a level of comfort. And that comfort is also on, uh, on things that are uh, based on the contract. I'll come to that just in a moment. Other very important thing is a stakeholder involvement, as we said. Stakeholder involvement. Uh, we want to include the city, the, the city authorities in this. Uh, city authorities is a full partner in, in this city. And uh, that's why we have uh, structural meetings also going forward with the city authority, where we share our uh, concerns, where they share our concern, their concerns. And we come to, to, let's say, solutions that might be good for anyone. And of course, uh, the neutral governance guarantees that this framework is open to anyone who wants to adhere to, uh, and from the side of the shippers, but also from the side of the uh, service providers. Just an idea on the contract, because that's quite innovative, I, I think. Uh, we have two contracts, two multilateral contracts governing uh, this collaboration. The first one is the community contract. This is in fact making the team, huh? uh, making the football team. Here we create a football team where we are the coach, so to say, three vices and the neutral coach. And we have players here, which are the companies uh, who want to adhere to, to the community. And this is really a community contract, this means there we uh, show how new companies can, can enter uh, or companies can exit. Uh, have to be open. So this means also a company can exit. Uh, how um, the gains are shared. And then I'll come back in, uh, to that just in a minute uh, because probably you're, you're interested to see how this works. Um, so this is all in the community contract. And then on, once you're, you're entered the community, the contract as a company, you can enter one of the LSP contracts. For instance, you are interested now, only Antwerp is active. So um, this is the contract, for instance, with Bpost, our first carrier, um, who is active in Antwerp. Three companies are already adhered. Uh, the others are now in the phase of the rollout, so they will soon adhere. Uh, probably all six or maybe seven will adhere also in Antwerp. This is ongoing. That's why I, I put here current situation. It's not a final situation. And each LSP contract has schedules for the active cities. Huh? So this is Antwerp. If, for instance, B Post will take us also or, or will be one of the suppliers in Brussels, then uh, Brussels will appear here. So, and we have exactly the same LSP contract for other uh, for other carriers. Huh? For instance, if we go to the city of Ghent or Liège, then it might be another, another, uh, another service provider. Then this is his contract, and he will show what in which active cities he's, he's working. But the strong thing is that we can continue to add this type of contracts uh, along with the number of service providers we want to involve. And this is important because we hope at some point in time uh, for instance, in case of Antwerp, today B Post uh, is doing uh, B2C, uh, C2C, uh, uh, B2B, uh, and also uh, pallets and parcels. But it can be that the temperature control they are not good at. Well, it can be then that we have another service provider that we combine in the city of Antwerp for uh, temperature controlled collaboration. Uh, while uh, it might be possible even, and this is something where uh, public authorities should, should engage because I know that some city authorities, I'm not saying that Antwerp is doing that, definitely not, but I know that some city authorities are thinking about, let's say, imposing zones for different service providers. And each zone is assigned with uh, uh, an open bit for different carriers. Well, this contract is easily able to take a zone if, if that would become uh, uh, interesting. 
or uh, this contract is also provided for a city authorities offering a urban consolidation center which is built by the city and uh, and there and, and all different companies can hire a part of that that building or something like that so every, all these activities uh, and with uh, more important involvement of the city authorities is perfectly covered in in this legal framework and also the companies agrees that this can happen uh, if we want to have a stronger involvement of city authorities doesn't matter it is uh, legally covered uh, at all time and the same way uh, of contracting we want to apply with uh, the IT platform uh, because the IT platform uh, is in fact another supplier and also we will do a kind of uh, request for a proposal there and finally let's say select a SaaS platform and we go for a SaaS platform because it is very difficult, especially for this type of collaboration, because these companies are only uh, connected through a, a contract. It's very difficult to ask money upfront to do an investment in, in an IT system. While we think that uh, the appropriate SaaS system already exists, so we should not reinvent the wheel. Uh, because again, uh, we are looking for a connector. A kind of universal connector where we can connect all the companies uh, with each other and then define the the, the process flows uh, among these uh, companies right and then um, just to end up i would like to share with you some some challenges that we that we encountered and we are still encountering uh, the first one is alignment huh? it's very important as from the start to define exactly what uh, the mission and the vision is that we are pursuing. And therefore, uh, something that we want to emphasize is the get together also. The companies should meet each other at regular times. No? So we have now provided once a month that we bring together all the supply chain uh, and logistics uh, and the urban logistics uh guys and girls from this company and they start to discuss together and we let's say we lead the discussion as a community manager but this is really interesting because then you have uh exchange of experiences among different industries and we come to solutions definitely and this is probably one of i think the most important things also at a strategic level that companies encounter uh, each other into a joint meeting where they can discuss even competitors and we discuss uh, uh, following the rules of the antitrust so it's completely safe completely comfortable to discuss these items in uh, in group and i think this is this will probably one of the major the major added values for all companies being able to to meet uh, peers but from different sectors with different experiences and sharing ex uh, exchanges this uh, this know how in uh, in the group. Second is the gain share. We came to a very simple uh, solution for gain share, where we ask the carrier in the RFP, you have to bring us a table, a staggered table, with all volumes between thousand parcels and hundred thousand parcels and you have to uh, mention your cost per drop for each of these uh, stagger values and now i think we are at twenty thousand or thirty thousand from startup parcels we have the corresponding uh, cost per drop that is applied to any member of the community and this means if we are now onboarding more companies and we will grow to five, 50,000, 70,000 parcels. Every company in the group, in the cult community, will see this cost per ton dropping. Right? And this is a very, very simple uh, mechanism incentivizing all companies to look for companies that want to come in and to onboard because we, all companies will become better 
of that, of having other companies on board, that simple principle is a very strong principle, right? Alex, sorry if we can come close to the to the end as also we have other interventions. I have two minutes before the end. Great, great, great. <laughs> Thanks. <you. laughs> the openness and the impartialness, that's an important one. We should be open for any company. I mean, if you have now the retailer Deleuze, the other retailer like Carrefour and Conrad should be able to come in and they should not be scared of that. And therefore, we have we do a lot of communication. We are regularly sending press releases also in, in, the, in the general and the specialized media just to emphasize this. It is an open and antitrust compliant community. Very important. Second, impartiality. This also holds for the fact that we can make carriers collaborating at the other side. And our framework is prepared to that. It's completely appropriate to do collaboration at the side of the shippers, the owners of the goods, but also at the side of the carriers, right? This also includes the scalability and that's that framework. And finally, we guarantee that every stakeholder, being the city authorities, being uh, the ship owner, uh, have a place in, in the cult initiative. And we want to, to, to really take them on board, not only the big companies, but also SME, but also ship, uh, shop owners by maybe having them together in a kind of joint groupings that they uh, enter then that way, the cult uh, framework. So there are initiatives ongoing on that. And if you're a company and you're interested uh, to come in, please join us uh, in Antwerp. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex, for this uh, very deep in diving into cult and explaining us what is it about and the, the activities. So uh, maybe as you called in before, so maybe Hans Schurman from Proximus, uh, maybe if you have something to, to add on this, as you've been mentioned, and it's also could be the point of view of one of the operators and um, involved in this. And then I see also a chat, a question from the chat that you can come quickly later uh, after Hans and then move, move on. So, But uh, I, for timing reasons, maybe I, I can be brief. You, you, you hear me well? Yes, yes, we do. Yeah, yeah I, I had some issues. So, okay. No, maybe for, for timing perspective, I, I can be brief. Maybe what are the two most important uh, messages? Uh, is that uh, thanks to the, the collaboration consolidation and so increasing the drop density, as Alex explained, uh, we have now a sustain, uh, sustainable model uh, not only from the green aspects and the city uh, viability, but also from an operational and a financial aspect. So the cost which I have now for my distribution entrepreneur is not higher, it's not lower neither, to be clear, but it's not higher than the cost which uh, I had for my operations uh, before. So that's important if we want to expand also to other cities as uh, cost is also quite important from, from our perspective. Uh, and on the other side, and, and that's a very uh, nice part, is it, I can state today that for the center of Antwerp, all my B2C and B2B uh, deliveries are fully green. So I, I want to be very brief, but those are uh, the financial and then the 100% green deliveries are for, for us the most important. Uh, all, also, the, the setup for us was relatively easy. Uh, it, 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 of course, need some integration and discussions uh, with the LSP, but overall it was a smooth uh, transition. Yeah, maybe, maybe just want to mention, it is 100% emission free. Yeah? So I, it is so obvious for me at this moment that maybe I forgot to, to emphasize this, but as from the consolidation center to the deliveries in the city, 100% emission free. And maybe I, I would like to answer the, the, the question in the chat based on that. Uh, the 90% CO2 reduction, it was uh, the situation compared where uh, Thor of Stalet and Proximus would go uh, previously, uh, drive with their own uh, vans and trucks into the city to the deliveries with, let's say, uh, oil-based uh, trucks uh, or traditional trucks compared to the situation where 
these trucks are used only to deliver to the to the consolidation center and as from the consolidation center it is emission free and that's how the calculations were made thank uh, you yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah last question to hans um recently i heard from um other cities they're talking about that they are very difficult to come commit um, to convince the local business to join such um, schemes. So from your point of view, what message you want to give a local business to join such a um, scheme? Uh, Yang Yang, what do you mean exactly with local business, uh, SMEs? Uh, yes, like shops, owners, and uh, yeah, in the city. Oh, okay, but uh, it's, uh, as Alex explained, uh, both the contract, the setup, uh, the IT, uh, the, so the interface, uh, is tuned to be th that open and flexible that uh, companies can easily plug in and that this might be big companies or, or small companies maybe we have to work with shop associations or something like this but uh, this is the future will tell uh, but normally the complexity for them to join us is uh, the same as for for a big company uh, and on the other side, they have the advantage to also come in the community and also have uh, the financial part of it. So they will um, profit from the fact that uh, the prices are based on uh, a ladder, which uh, Alex also show, showed. So if we have high volumes and their volumes are even lower, they will benefit from the, the total volumes of the community. Fantastic, thank you, um, Hans. I think we should uh, communicate this message. Okay, great. Um, we have a number of questions in the um, chat box and the question and answer. So Alex, if you don't mind, then you can answer directly through that it would be really nice. And then we can move to the next one. If we have time, then we can come back revisit. There will be Yang Ying, uh, I, I responded to the most of them. And for the last, uh, Alex responded in the call. Um, it's just for the availability and the sharing of the contract, we, we have to check uh, with legal. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, I think we can move on to, and uh, as said, so keep questions for the final uh, round discussion in, in case next one. So we can move on for, with, the, with, with the next speaker and um, give the floor to Sergio Fernandez Balaguer from EMT Madrid and Hangel Batalla. And about to, so moving here now to the lead you funded project. So uh, I invite you to uh, share your presentation, uh, okay. Sergio or Hankel. I will go for it. So, oops, sorry, compartir. Yeah, that's loading. I Can you see it now? Yes, yes, we can. Perfect. Okay, go for it. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity of presenting today a uh, lead project at this session. Uh, there will be three speakers on behalf of Madrid Living Lab. So myself, uh, I work for EMT Madrid, the public transport operator of the city. And then my colleagues, Angel Batalla from Last Mile team and Alfonso Molina from City Login. They are both uh, lead partners as well. So um, what is LEAD project? Well, the acronym responds to low emission adaptive last mile logistics supporting on-demand economy through digital trends. Basically the project intends to add this technology side of it. Uh, so learning how to use digital twins to improve uh, the sustainability of uh, last mile delivery. Uh, the project started uh, two years ago, almost two years ago, and uh, we are quite a bunch of, of partners, uh, including corporations uh, with China and the US. EMT Madrid is the um, the coordinator and you may think what's a public transport operator doing in logistics well actually we would don't intend to become a, a logistic uh, company it's because beyond the bus service we are also managing all the mobility services in the city of madrid such as underground parking facilities we have quite a lot uh, of of them uh, 28 in total with more than uh, uh, no, 12,400 parking lots. And some of these facilities can play a, a relevant role in, in helping uh, logistics. 
to be used as urban consolidation centers or cross docking stations. So the context uh, you already know, I mean, uh, the, the, the rise of on-demand logistics is, is, is crazy, uh, uh, has even become more relevant uh, and accelerated uh, during the pandemic. Uh, so basically all of us became uh, a shop in, in, our, in our homes and uh, that puts a lot of stress in the last mile delivery systems. We as, as customers, we want an, an immediate response uh, and generally at a very low cost or even for free. Uh, the industry needs to, to react to this demand, and then cities face the, the different difficulties, such as congestion, air quality, etc. So LEED, what it, it pretends is to help cities uh, developing better policies, to predict, to evaluate, and also to foster new business models and helping at the same time their logistic uh, sector. So um, the idea is to start, first of all, understanding the, 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 the current context uh, to create this framework and to validate uh, this by implementing physical pilots in these six living labs, Madrid, The Hague, Lyon, Porto, Budapest, and Oslo, by uh, also applying and experimenting and simulating uh, uh, through a digital twin. And this digital twin also by the implementation of these physical real life experiments feed uh, onto the digital twin and helps validating these strategies and, and these reusable models and, and to basically help us creating this roadmap and, and, and these uh, new policies. So the project has uh, already uh, developed a, a very relevant library of different models so you can pick up those uh, models uh, and modules to create, to tailor your own digital twin. You have models to assess um, emissions, to assess uh, noise, to assess um, the routine, to optimize the routine, etc., etc. But uh, my colleagues will also tell you something more uh, afterwards. Uh, just to give you a detail on the the different living labs. I will not stop in Madrid because we will focus then uh, on it. But for instance, the hack uh, is um, integrating, wants to integrate different plat platforms uh, to match demand supply. Uh, Porto, for instance, is a fully private use case and they, uh, with Sonai is a, a big retail company and they are turning, they want to integrate and, and turn their shops into uh, electric mobility delivery points, so using electric vehicles. Um, Lyon is also validating last mile distribution models in a very specific area in the city. Uh, also exploring the possibility of using autonomous vehicles for that. Budapest is, is more focused on uh, either micro and, and, and micro uh, modeling, so special, special planning in the, of, the, of the inner city loading areas and how to, to assess also the emissions derived from, from the logistics. And in Oslo, they are also exploring uh, green crowd shipping and by using the public transport network. So they, are, they will have also pickup points and, and some uh, uh, public transport stations. This is just an overview. But um, what is also uh, important for you to know is uh, the different uh, are the different strategies. Uh, so as I mentioned, the idea is to focus on innovative business models and trying to to help uh, private uh, companies to improve their their efficiency and, and their their business models, uh, implementing agile freight storage and distribution, and um, and the idea is to to use uh, this sort of multi echelon uh, ways of delivering and to, to approach this physical internet. Uh, then low emission vehicles, most of them are, are, are uh, electric and uh, also learn how to use this data. So start really taking decisions and, and, and uh, uh, implementing solutions based on uh, smart data driven uh, assessments. Uh, and this is also quite relevant. The main innovations beyond the use of a digital twin, which is the main one, is to, to have also a community of practice and co-create these solutions for on-demand economy. So each of the living labs have its, its own local community uh, to share information, to, to ask uh, for different aspects, to, to, to work with them together in, in different workshops. 
And, and this way, we also try to, to help cities embracing this technology and this data-driven data approach and speeding up this transition toward the physical internet paradigm. And uh, last but not least, um, the impacts. So beyond also a better understanding of these cost-effective strategies, um, the idea is to test new practices and new solutions to foster public-private cooperation between suppliers, shippers, etc., and also to provide this input for cities for the implementation and, and development of either sustainable urban logistic plans or sustainable urban mobility plans or all the planning tools based on these big data and, and this real-time uh, traffic management, based on these data-driven, such as, for instance, new types of incentives for sustainable uh, deliveries or uh, uh, any sort of regulation that the city may, may need. So uh, entering into Madrid, um, you know that Madrid is a quite an important logistic hub. Uh, we belong to two different uh, trans-European uh, network corridors. We face, as many other big cities, occasional air quality and congestion challenges, and we have also low emission zone and different regulations, the sustainability strategy in Madrid 360, and also uh, this, this rise, rise of, of, of uh, home delivery and e-commerce. So the idea in Madrid was and is to focus on the use of a urban consolidation center connected to these TNT networks. To, to assess flows and congestion and apply in, uh, this route optimization engine to explore alternative and sustainable business models together with the private sector and fostering this cooperation and helping also uh, them to increase their efficiency and reliability. And finally, exploring these different incentives based on this data management. The local partners of Madrid Lim Lab are Settle C, Zaragoza Logistics Center, Last Mile Team, who is uh, also working in this uh, route optimization engine, City Login, uh, they are the, the, the freight operators. Uh, and then we have a uh, UPM, the University, uh, Polytechnic University of Madrid, and also Panasonic providing some, some data. So uh, this will be also presented further by, by Alfonso later on. Uh, but uh, this is the, the hub we have uh, deployed in Plaza Mayor is really very centrally located within the low emission zone in Madrid and uh, is from where these uh, operations, last my delivery is being done by using electric vehicles. So um, you can see some pictures here, but I will not uh, focus on this because later you will see a video which is much more interesting. This is just to let you know that each living lab have different KPIs and different targets in terms of emissions, uh, in terms of uh, uh, different parameters. So we are also measuring the benefits of this and, and also uh, later on we'll show you the first uh, results of the application of the digital twin and finally before stepping uh, giving the floor to my colleague angel um, we need your cooperation so transit from uh, university uh, polytechnic university of madrid it's both lead and alice partner is launching a questionnaire to help identify in priorities among the different sustainability criteria related of course to last mile logistics so the idea is that we will be very grateful if you could fill this questionnaire by June the 15th, uh, the latest. I will share the link, oops, sorry. I will share the link in the, in the chat box so you can copy from there. And if you have any doubt or clarification, please contact these two persons. So now, yes, I will give the floor to my colleague, Angel. Angel, the floor is yours. Um, yeah, you have to quit sharing. Uh, uh, shall I stop sharing, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now I started to share. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Angel Batalla. I am one of the founders of Last Mile Team, an SME that is one of the partners of, of Madrid Living Lab in, in the context of, of lead project. Um, what I wanted to share with you today is, is the workflow and preliminary results that we have obtained of our use case. Remember, we are transforming in a parking lot into an urban consolidation center. So what we do have are two scenarios. One as is from the very urban location located 25 kilometers away from the UCC and that of the UCC 
to distribute in one of Madrid's low emission zones that I think has 120,000 inhabitants and encompasses like five, five zip codes. The, the very first step is to gather data and, and probably the most difficult one to, to gather quality data to enable you to play with, with the model and understand the consequences and ask and answer different uh, research questions and different applied questions on, on what if you change the technology of the vehicles or you change the, the timetable to deliver or you change the low emission zone. So basically it's the geospatial information of the area you want to study. Um, we're using an average of the traffic speed in the last six months per street segment. So to provide you with a reasonable and accurate uh, calculation of, of the routes uh, distances and the time employed. We have the vehicle characteristics, the personnel available to run it, and one which is variable that changes every day, obviously, which is on the, on the daily services. So that's the data portion, hard to obtain, particularly the geolocation of all the daily services that sometimes has, has certain difficulties and is fundamental to run the, the twin. The pre-process we run uses a model, a rough cut distribution planning model, which runs in parallel both scenarios with the services of the day. And the result of that is sent to an emissions calculation, uh, which is a model I will later on expand on what the model is, and presents the user with, it's a, it's a multi multi-criteria decision support tool, uh, basically on a screen so the user can decide which one of the two scenarios does he or she want to run to the, to the next step. Um, the next step is the routing optimization. Then you go into uh, the difficulty of having to have a thorough configuration of, of the optimizer and the different modules with a lot of, a lot of information. You are using a cartography to, to map the routes. And, and then the result of it is, is triple. On the one hand, uh, when it's in, on the bottom, you give uh, to the logistics partner a routes executional plan that could even be fed if, if that's, that's the, the desire of the logistics partner into their track and trace system to follow up the planning of the day. You have the final emissions calculation. We are using the same uh, um, emissions calculator. However, now you are providing an absolutely detailed input turn by turn, segment by segment, so you can have an a most accurate possible representation of the emissions. And um, I want to I want to mention here, although it's not yet in the in the module, uh, the Polytechnic University of Madrid is developing a very innovative approach to calculate what is the impact of the electricity produced for the electric vehicles, the impact in, in CO2 emissions. Sometimes we tend to say that, that are 0% uh, emissions, emissions-free vehicles. However, this is not completely true because you do have to bring into the electric power to, to propel them and load them every day. Uh, um, they also are running a pretty innovative model to calculate the impact on the noise on the routes that we drive in the different scenarios. So depending on the vehicles, they have measured the vehicle types and they will be able to give you uh, an absolutely accurate noise impact in the vicinities in the neighborhood which are affected by, by the routes. And the last step, although this is still work in progress, just started a week ago, we're building an open data repository to put in, in, in the EMT Madrid uh, Mobility Lab, which is their open data platform. So it will be easily available to any researcher or city uh, logistics service provider or any other stakeholder or interested person to have that data that we've been compiling since we started in December one, and will enable them to run their models and to test their own models with real real data. Uh, ideally, it will be on your own city. However, when you want to turn the module and to tune in the different models and the different equations, you can use 
the data of us you know, to calibrate yours and get results applied to your city, which are equally relevant. Our assessment scenario, just to land it into the physical reality, is, is, a, is a box of 40 by 30 by 30 centimeters with one kilo weight is the average parcel. So it gives us a 22 kilo per, per square uh, um, cubic meter density. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty light. We currently are using, and that's also important, a Euro 6 CI uh, engine. So it's already a hybrid van, uh, which is not, so we're not doing the comparison with a diesel van, but, but with a true van that is being used today. And the personnel working hours, which are from 9 to 5.30 every day, with a compulsory break of 30 minutes if the journey is more than six hours in a day. Uh, these are rough data and I will not spend too much time. The presentation will be shared to any one of you that is interested and wants to dig into the numbers. And I'm absolutely open to discuss or to answer any questions that, that you may have, whether it's today or, or at a later date, uh, if you so wish. So we have 120 for working days with already 28,000 deliveries, deliveries and pickups combined executed and 38,000 kilometers driven. If you look at the activity and that the logistics operator would tell you much more about it, it's, it's a nightmare. I mean, the period is from December one. So we have not caught all the surge that comes from single day, mid November or early November. We have missed this year that, that part of the, of the demand. Uh, however, we have passed through the Black Friday, the Christmas period, and the, and the sales period after Christmas. Uh, and you can see that for that specific scenario, we had 20 vehicles the very first day, the, the very uh, most occupied day, whereas the least occupied day, we only had one vehicle. So it's mind boggling that is the, is the reality and is the truth. And this is what happens when you know when you try to uh, put the uh, consumers and behavior into the equation. So it's, it's the, the diversity and the you know the search is, is massive. The same thing holds true with the services, obviously, and the kilometers driven. Um, here, I don't have the percentage, but it's worth to note that we are taking 65 to 67 percent of the time on serving the services, whereas the vehicle is stopped. So from one place to the other with a high density area, it's something that you could have expected. Now you have the evidence of how long time do we spend driving and how long time do we spend uh, servicing the different, the different services. And because of the density of the parcel, as you can see, the capacity utilization of the vehicle is, is really uh, not used fully in this specific scenario. If we were with, with beverages, the story will be different. However, we here exhaust much faster the volume capacity than the weight uh, of, of the vehicles. And if you now talk about a specific vehicles, you see that they do anything between 34 to 74 services uh, during, during the day, the, the busiest and the less busy day. Interesting, the kilometers driven. This was, remember, a Euro 6, a hybrid. 82 is the average with a maximum of 110, which tells you that as of today, you could be doing, as, as the city logging uh, operator is doing, you could be doing 100% of your services with that type of a van, even with a fully electric van, um, because you do have much more than enough battery capacity and vehicle autonomy as to do as to do that and change overnight all the different all the different vehicles that you have which are still diesel or or any other classification our to be scenario which you will see in a minute that's already starting to run is the same is the same uh, uh, parcel however we are now using a trike an electric trike which has a 250 kilo payload and can carry 39 of those parcels. Again, 39 parcels are 39 kilo. So you can, you can see that the, the, we, are, we are not using the, the, the weight at all, exhausting the capacity of the vehicle, uh, specifically for the traffic that we are analyzing these days. And we have people working exactly the same journey from nine to 
Uh, a very rough idea. These are only two and three routes, so you, you can't really see the major differences, but that you could appreciate the one on the left that has these two legs that go outside the graph uh, is, is the one from current scenario, 25 kilometers away from uh, the city center. However, this is from the, from the UCC already. You could see that particularly in the upper part of the graph, you could see how the routes change. And basically given the density of deliveries, we, we, are, we are kind of running a reticula of, 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 of the roads uh, and the streets uh, basically every day. There are a few places that, that we are not passing by. And if we compare one with the other, and again, uh, we will, we will uh, provide you with this for, for a later study if you so wish. We have considered from San Fernando, which is the name of the, of the, of the city where today the depot is located. We have cap captured the day, the, the, the driving time, the time to serve and the kilometers driven. And in Plaza Mayor is where the UCC stays. We have captured the, the um, feeding of parcels from San Fernando to the city hub, which is this very first row, the last mile itself <clears throat> and the total. The, the two major highlights are on the one hand, kilometer wise, we're saving a 33% of kilometers. We don't have the impact neither in, neither in noise nor in emissions. You know, in the, the project is <clears throat> right after the, its middle of its middle of its life. So, if in few months we will be able to to enhance that and and quote the different KPIs that Sergio just shown. Uh, so, something which we all I think consider almost natural is that the you know the more the more we use the UCC, the more we will reduce the kilometers driven. However. It is important to note that the vehicles that we will have to use are different vehicles of those used today. So the vehicle that is feeding the city hub will have to be over 3,500 kilo, a medium to, I would say, semi-large truck uh, with a ramp to, to be able to feed efficiently the city hub. However, the numbers are there. It's a one third of the, of the kilometers driven reduced and the driving time is a 12%. Uh, and, and is that so? And it's important to note that this may imply for the logistics operator a shift on their, on their uh, employment practices. Um, we have calculated the minimum time which is needed for people to execute the jobs. However, some of the um, um, collective agreements do not allow to, to pay by the hour. Some of the agreements allow to have people part-time or people to reinforce in a specific timetables. Every city, every operator, every, every, every different parcel delivery will have to look at how it fits within their structure because that 12% reduction may not be the reduction on, on, on cost. And the last thing I wanted to say to you is whether the cities, practitioners, uh, logisticians, academics, it's stay tuned um, because the two modules which I have refer uh, that work on the pre in the pre-process, you could perfectly run if you start to compile the data, you could perfectly run in a day or two once it's ready and is published, run exactly the same tools that we are running today and have your preliminary emissions calculation and have your rough cut distribution planning. We have made with, this is done by CEDLC, by Saragossa Logistics Center, and the one of the emissions for traditional vehicles, we are using copper, which is the European Union standard for vehicle emissions and energy consumption. So you could be running that no matter what the size of the city, no matter the size of the operation. It's, it's really easy. It, it works with, with very limited data and it gives you a ballpark so you do have a pretty good idea of what if you, you change a vehicle type in an area or you put a low emission zone in a certain area of the city or another one, make it bigger or smaller. So it helps to play a lot and 
And overall, it helps to foster the discussion with all the stakeholders with, with hard-based data before you embark into any potential investment or any potential new, new system, you can run that very easily. Uh, so you want to know more, stay tuned, uh, um, subscribe to our LinkedIn or follow us there. Uh, Polish will certainly publish once the models are ready and it will be easy for you to go to a public GitHub repository and bring down the data, as well as if you so wish, you could download or use the, the open data set that we are putting together, hopefully will be online more or less about the same time. So there is no excuse. You can start anytime you want. Thank you. That was all. And uh, now I guess that we have Alfonso. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Can you hear me well and see my screen? Yes, go we ahead. can hear you well, yeah. Yeah, I will do it quick. Okay, first uh, I, I'm Alfonso Molina, I'm the project manager of CityLogin, and I'm focused directly in the use, uh, UCC uh, real implementation and validation of the model of the digital twin. Okay, just uh, a few, uh, few uh, steps. That is the facility selected as Sergio said, this was a public parking in Plaza Mayor. Okay, uh, this was management of uh, the Sorry, Alfonso. Uh, yeah? You said that you are sharing the screen? Yeah, but not. Okay, sorry. No. I will share. Okay, let me now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now that's it. Oh, okay. Correct. Okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, as Sergio told, is uh, was the facility selected was the public parking in Plaza Mayor, just in the middle of the low emission zone in, in Madrid. Okay. The challenges we experienced and foreseen just uh, the first one is the management of the administrative permissions. The second one was the adaptation of these premises to the to the activity that we were taking physically. Okay. Uh, that includes the uh, just, uh, adaptation to space and the premise and also the, the electricity facilities for, for this operation. Uh, the selection of, of the appropriate vehicles just for fouling and, and the delivery service. And of course, the workforce selection for, for running the, the UCC. Okay. Uh, in the in the field of management of administrative permissions, I have to, to say to all of you that the coordination between AEMT and city login was very critical to, to increase the velocity for fulfilling the administrative uh, steps necessary. Yeah. So it's, it was clear that the, the collaboration between public and and the uh, and industry uh, how it will manage. Uh, some SQD uh, cases like this, or the real, real allocation of this solution. And, and that allowed City Login to focus more on resources in adapt the premises and, and accelerate the ramp up that activity to, to start as, as soon as possible to catch all the data for the model, to construct the model, and to validate. Okay, just uh, two photos about uh, the premises before the implementation of the uh, of the hub and now to focus to focus more about the there are right now uh, implemented okay just yes, this is a, a photo of the installations electrical installations that we will need and also just a, a photo of the, the entry about the selection of the vehicles uh, the selection was made taking account the, the vehicles capacities in bottom weight and resonation of, um, of maneuverability of all the postal codes that were involved in the low emission zone in Madrid. Okay. Also, we take in account the physical limitations of the premises. This is one of the points that we will manage because the height limitation to enter in the parking facility. It, uh, uh, also, the average deliveries in the low emission zone, and of course, the energy construction and charge mode installation that is needed for the premises. These are the two vehicles already used in the UCC. Uh, the left one 
Oh. It's the light electric vehicle that we use already for the deliveries. And the right uh, hand is the van that we use to, to get all the boxes to the UCC from the external hub that we are already using. And for last, the last is the workforce selection. The selection was made in taking in, in, in account 12 positions needed. Uh, yes, uh, it was uh, weight in the number of packets estimated in the, in the area. Uh, that's, we promote free drivers that, that already were uh, drivers in other operations to the provision of dispatcher. And uh, we add nine people in new contract for delivery operations. Results. Okay, uh, as the UCC operations uh, are now under that assessment that is uh, to, to, to share uh, the, the impact of the, and the different KPIs that we need in, in, in the project lead that you already have seen with, with Seth here. It's already in the middle of the, of the this data assessment. So just a little tips I can, I can share with you about the operation and that we have just uh, a little vision about uh, which is the impact, uh, directly impacting in operations. That uh, these three points, for example, we detect a reduction, for example, from minutes uh, needed to in average time to delivery in, a, in an area for, for each delivery, uh, from six minutes that it was normal from, from a van until five minutes in the light electrical vehicle. It will be for two, it's better to. Uh, just to park and also it's, a, it's more maneuverability, the light vehicle, so it's, 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 it's normal. And uh, incremented quality of the deliveries due to a better adjustment from ITA with the real time. This is something that uh, we are uh, also include in lead model to be sure that we will increase the, the, the capability of the drivers to uh, reach the ITA with a real time in delivery is key for, for a better performance of the deliveries and also for the cabs, okay? And of course, we uh, just detect in these six months of running the, the physical implementation, a reduction of accidents, damage, and failures in the area. That is uh, something that Angel already uh, shared with us in the, in the conclusion that, all, that the uh, Living Lab for Madrid just already detected, okay? Uh, how many new opportunities we, we will uh, share with, about the implementation of UCC? Uh, yeah, is of course to offer new bean deliveries or pick a service in the area for our local enterprises or particulars. We, are now, we have now a better uh, visibility in the area. Uh, also, we uh, just explore installation of lockers or physical pickup points or another uh, kind of business that we will do from this UCC. And of course, to integrate operation, operation and cohabit theory knowledge about the, the local needs in the world itself, the community. We, we are more integrated in the area, like, like a business partner of the cohabit of the, of the city. I think this is a, a great important knowledge that a, a LSP like we are is, is great value for us. And lessons led, yeah, a great collaborative model basset are possible and necessary. This is something that we are focused on. New freight business model, more ecological, social, and local is possible. And the term that we call competition is necessary between different enterprises like, like Alice in the first presentation tell. And we are, of course, with this direction also that, that competition is necessary. Uh, to reach a better level uh, and involve all the stakeholders in, the, in reaching the top of operational capacities for the micro hub, the external hubs, whatever solution we will explore. So uh, just for finish, one phrase that is uh, used here in city logic in the future is not sustainable, it's not future. And I would say you, but uh, I don't know if it will work properly. Uh, I try to send you uh, the video just two minutes video, uh, and I, I will try it, but if not works properly, I will share with you with the chat, okay? I will try. Okay, okay I can share from this.
I don't hear the sound. I don't know if that would sound. Um, nevertheless, we can um, put this video together with all the presentations published at our <clears throat> event page. Okay, it works, no, no problem. Thank you, thank you very much, Sergio, Alfonso, and Hangel for your presentations. Uh, I've seen there were a few questions on the chat, which some have already been answered, it seems to me. Uh, maybe very, very quickly, uh, I see a question from Hans. So how is the financial model built for CityLog? Very quick answer, I would say, then we move to the last speaker as we are running out of time. So maybe if someone will can quickly reply to these questions. How is the financial model built for city log? Alfonso, I don't know uh, if I may may say um, one of the uh, let's say contribution. I mean the main contribution actually of EMT has been to provide the space for free in order to help them uh, deploying the service. So that helps with the the, the initial investment cost. Uh, otherwise, renting space in the city. Uh, may be expensive, um, but I don't know if Alfonso, you can add uh, something else about the, the financial model you 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 have. That, that is the facility premises in, a, in the public uh, in the public park is just explain it by Sergio, just assume all the facilities uh, assessment of, for the new activity from city logging and for the vehicles and the workforce and otherwise yeah, all, all the operational costs. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for the clarification. So I would now move to the last speaker of this webinar session to and give the floor to EIT Urban Mobility and Arthur Boetis so to explain our the Challenge My City factory, Challenge My City and the partnership with, uh, with Madrid. So uh, Arthur, the floor is yours. Yes, hi, sorry, last minute. Um, can everybody see my screen correctly? First yes, all, we can. To make sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, so first of all, thank you for having me. And second of all, what I'm here to present pretty much is in line with uh, with the lead project, with which has already been introduced to you. So let me just give a quick introduction about EIT Urban Mobility for those of you who don't know about us. We are an initiative from the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, and we are promoting and trying to promote a uh, more sustainable way of moving around cities and inside the cities in order to make them more livable. So the idea is that in order to do so, we have launched what we call the Challenge My City. So the Challenge My City, what we try to do is we partner with different European cities, in this case, the city of Madrid, and we have a series of workshops uh, over a couple over a couple of months in which we try to understand what are some of the challenges they're facing. And after this, we come up with, uh, with these challenges. We are trying to find innovative solutions to pilot test these solutions for around five to six months. 
obviously all, all of this is going to be funded by us and the idea is to have this pilot evaluated by the end to see if uh, the, the pilot and these challenges is, is, is in fact something that the city can on the long term be assessing. Uh, so with this city of Madrid, with this new call that we launch, we are trying to promote uh, the use of greener and more sustainable last mile delivery methods and a better understanding of the use of the new active mobility areas that Madrid is, is having. So in the call, we launched three different challenges, but today I'll focus mostly on the first challenge, which is a pilot test for logistic hub for green last mile delivery. So first of all, before diving into the challenge, I'm going to expose a little bit some of the requirements. We want to uh, we want these pilots and these uh, proposals to have. So first of all, all types of applicants are welcome since we have some startups are already partnered with us, but this call is open to everybody, to all the SMEs located in a member state of the European Union or from a third country associated to Horizon Europe. So despite the challenge being located in Madrid, everybody from the European Union is welcome to participate. Uh, the proposal should be in line with our vision and mission at the EIT Urban Mobility Strategic Agenda, which I'm believing if you already have something in line of last mile delivery sustainable, it's already in line with our vision and mission. Uh, we obviously try to bring some novelty, some innovation factor. This is a very broad definition since we want something new but we don't want to put any limits into it. That's why we give a broad, uh, a broad definition. Some, some downsides to it, if you want to call it that way, is that you sh should propose a financial sustainability mechanism to EIT urban mobility. Unfortunately, this is something that it's been uh, mandated for us by the EIT institution. So unfortunately, this is not something uh, it's negotiable up to some point, but I will go into further details. Uh, other requirements are the key performance indicators, the KPIs. So obviously we are asking for two main KPIs, an innovation pilot scaling, meaning you have to bring some innovation into your proposal and a marketed innovation, proving that the innovation that you're bringing has already been developed and it's in a higher TRL, at least TRL 7, as it was stated previously um, the financial sustainability mechanism this is unfortunately this is something that it's mandated to us so the idea is that we will fund this pilot project but on the long run we would uh, need either two main alternatives the first of all which is obviously our preferred will be some equity in exchange for the funding provide or Exceptionally, you could also uh, subscribe to one of our EA Urban Mobility Growth Labs programs where startups and SMEs get dedicated support service. Now, this is something that whether you decide to go with equity or the Growth Lab, this is something you will get. Um, so this is some, are some of the benefits that if you're the winning proposal, you will get with us. First of all, you'll get, a, you'll get my full support and some of my colleagues support as well through the pilot implementation will always be by your side to help you in any possible issues you may encounter. We also will have some city officials from the city of Madrid helping you and supporting you with uh, the proposal and the administrative task. And of course, you will have the inclusion and, promo and promotion of your solution in our mobility innovation marketplace. Now the marketplace is this uh, one-stop shop we have created for cities, startups, and SMEs to promote their solutions, as well as for cities mainly to look for solutions. The idea is that if one city has a challenge, they can go into this marketplace and try to find the solution that suits best their needs. Um, further down the road, uh, once you have sign this financial sustainability agreement, you will also have support in scaling up your solutions for up to the next, not only during the pilot, but for years to come afterwards, meaning you'll have access to our support in accessing funding, whether it's through AIB loans, uh, accessing 
uh, Horizon Europe calls and building consortia. You will also have assistance in positioning through our th thought leadership studies that we also help. We will help you promote your solution through the marketplace in some showrooms, as well as have some uh, insight into further calls that could also be of interest to you. Now, the budget for this for this challenge that we're offering is up to 60,000 euros. So the idea is we will give you this funding. There's no need, there's no specific co-funding required since uh, previously we launched another call where this was required, but it's no longer. If you want to provide a co-funding, obviously during the evaluation process, there will be this will be positively evaluated, but it's not required. Um, and finally, the description of the challenge. So as it's been very well presented by the lead program and city lock in prior to me, what we're looking is to implement this logistic hub for green last mile delivery. So what we're looking for is either a startup or SME on their own or through a consortium of companies, of course, uh, that also will be accepted and will not uh, affect in any way your evaluation. The idea is for them to manage, operate uh, a specific space, most likely a parking area as well, to collect goods from large distribution industry and to deliver them to the final client by means of green or zero emission vehicles, such as cargo bikes, electric vehicles, or other innovative solutions that we leave up to you. Um, the innovation that we're looking for can be demonstrated by proposing, as I mentioned, an innovative last mile service for the city and new ways of delivery. Maybe an e-scooter service or cargo bikes, delivery optimization software to make sure the routes are, are always the fastest and the cleanest. Um, yes, so the successful applicant will be responsible for the installation, operation and maintenance of the solution. Obviously, we will help through all of this process I was prior mentioning. Uh, during the whole pilot period, which uh, will be from beginning of August until the end of the year. Of course, that's the pilot. Um, afterwards, there can be talks between the SME or the consortium of SMEs and the city of Madrid to leave the solution implemented for a longer period of time. That is always on the table since that's our end goal. Uh, so far, the preliminary location where we'll be assessing this place will be in the Moncloa Mobility Hub, which is not as city center as where city login is established, but I do, we do believe that this is also a very good uh, place since we have access to train, subway and bus hubs, which is always uh, interesting. So. A little bit of the calendar of this call. So the call we opened, we opened it on the 20th of April this year, and it will remain open until the 20th of June. So you have almost a month still to go through all the documents, which I will put the link so you can have access to all the documents and all the information over there to further assess uh, your eligibility. You'll, there will be the eligibility criteria, the performance, and, and so on. So the idea is between the 20th of June and the end of June, we make sure that uh, all the proposals we have received are eligible and admissible to make sure that all the proposals uh, can move forward onto the next step, which is the evaluation process. For this, we will be having an expert of external evaluators. So it's not up to us. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it will be around three or four external evaluators who in the first weeks of July will evaluate all the received proposals. And by mid-July, uh, we will start with the communications and the conditions clearing, making sure that everybody is eligible and all the documents and all the information is, is in check, such as bank details and so on. So that way, by the end of July, beginning of August, we have a final, final selection and the uh, pilot can start as soon as possible. So, you may be as asking yourself, how do I apply to this call? Well, here's a short, uh, short uh, first steps on how to apply. The first thing you'll need to have is to obtain your PIC, which is the 
uh, participant identification code. I will also send all the links and everything. It's on the on the guide of applicants, on the guidelines for applicants that you will also be able to find. Uh, the idea is that you need to be registered and have a big number. As you can see here, it only takes about 10 minutes to register and obtain, which is not, not a long time. Second of all, you will need to register onto Plaza, which is our um, partner partner area, partner area for EAT Urban Mobility. You'll need to register and the process to apply will be once you have registered and we have given you approval, uh, which will take a maximum of two working days since we do this manually. You'll need to complete your partner information form, which again, a couple minutes, it's done. And then afterwards, you'll be able to find the, uh, the form in, in order to complete it and submit it since we have a, a template for you to complete your proposal. Uh, here are some other links. I'll try to share with you the presentation. Uh, useful links to either have some help desk and some contact details. Or if you still have any questions, uh, you can always reach out to me at my personal at my my email here, and I will solve if all your questions. And if I cannot solve, I redirect you to the more uh, to the more competent colleague of mine that can handle that. Um, so the idea here, once again, is to help Madrid and help you as startups and SMEs to. Uh, help us solve these, these upcoming issues that are coming. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Now we reach to um, <laughs> yeah. half past exactly the time. So our time's up. So I may not have time for any um, questions. I see there's still a few questions um, cannot be answered. So I think we take them offline. And thank you. I take this opportunity. Thank you for everyone to your participations. And thank you for the speakers um, for excellent presentations and is very well received, I believe. And um, this is the second um, webinars of COVID Alice uh, webinar series. And the next uh, um, few will be on different topics. Again, uh, next one will be in zero emission zones, zero emission vehicles. We also we have inland waterways for urban logistics. And we want to open the discussions on urban spaces how to uh, use urban space um, better. And we will, most important, we will report all our activities we learned in this year's at the police conference by end of this year, as one year after we published the joint guide of um, emission urban logistics. So I pause here, um, Rafala, if no more comments, um, we will um, close this webinar and